Hello friends, hi, this is Dr. Shabali Chandra and I welcome you all to our YouTube channel Medicine Decoded. I'm 35. My life's plans up till now did not include having a baby or planning for a family. And like me, there's so many of us, friends and colleagues, who sometime in their life have to face this biological truth. I mean, it's unfair, but it's true nonetheless that women are born with a finite number of eggs and as we age, progressively this number declines till we reach the age of menopause ultimately. And in our late 30s and you know early 40s, this drop in the number of eggs is particularly very rapid. Let's call it as reproductive, aging, age-related, you know, decline in fertility. The quality of eggs also uh, you know, deteriorates. And uh, getting pregnant at a later age also increases the risk of having, you know, abnormal eggs, which are chromosomally abnormal, leading to, you know, increased risk of having chromosomally abnormal embryos and, you know, lead to the risk of having Down syndrome, like, for example, in the fetus. So there is all this talk about, you know, stopping or freezing the sticking biological clock with the help of egg freezing. Now, egg freezing is a technique in which um, the eggs are extracted from the female's body and they can be stored in the lab frozen uh, for any number of years to be used at a later point in time. Like, for instance, a woman could get her eggs frozen in her early 30s and as and when she decides to have a baby or, you know, plans ahead, she can use them later. So the frozen eggs are going to be thawed, unfrozen, and then the partner sperms will be used to fertilize those eggs in the lab to get an embryo and that embryo would be then put inside the womb or the uterus of the woman to achieve a pregnancy and we all know this uh, that it is done in the form of in vitro fertilization right IVF we call it now the medical science behind it is very well established and um, over the years techniques of IVF have also increased by leaps and bounds right Earlier, egg freezing was done for mostly medical reasons. Like, for instance, if a young woman were to have some sort of cancer which needed chemotherapy or a medical treatment which could lead to, you know, damage to the ovaries or let's say she had to undergo some surgery which could lead to damage to the ovaries, then egg freezing was an option so that, you know, she could retain her fertility at a later point in time. Nowadays, more and more women are thinking about and discussing the idea, the possibility of freezing their eggs for non-medical reasons. Um, let's call them very personal reasons, which could be variable, like for instance, you know, um, singlehood, I mean, waiting for the right partner to come along and you know, don't want to rush into motherhood, um, have, you know, different plans for themselves in their life, are chugging. Uh, careers or uh, studies. Having a baby is not in the plan right now, but eventually would be, right? So wouldn't it be nice to, you know, let's just say get a few extra years. So I gave it a lot of thought. I researched about it and the information is um, massive. It is sometimes conflicting. It is sometimes stressful and sometimes it's difficult to handle, especially when in our society, um, so much burden is placed on uh, women with questions like, uh, you're not married yet, um, do you have kids, or when are you going to plan for a baby? When motherhood has been made central to the idea of uh, womanhood, I mean, where somehow it is stigmatized or women are made to feel bad about, um, even feeling that, you know, having a baby or a child could interfere with your life's plans, your career goals, job prospects or travel plans i mean where we somehow need to believe that you know it's it could be either your career or either having a family or a baby and we want to have the best of both worlds so there is an element of sexism there you know like uh, biologically or socially speaking i mean women have no restriction on their age related fertility but women do and somehow it's okay to be an elderly father but it's um, not okay to be an elderly mother so yes, um, this planned egg freezing, which is sometimes also called as uh, social egg freezing or, you know, elective egg freezing, does offer various uh, benefits and advantages like, you know, they give the woman the choice and um, to plan for their own lives as and when they want to. They give some degree of control over their biological clock. Yes, it does. And does provide, let's say, a reproductive autonomy to the woman and help plan our lives without actually 
stressing about uh, deteriorating quality of eggs or you know, decreasing egg number. So this is all true. But there is another side to the coin about which we should be aware of. We should be discussing that as well uh, before making such informed decisions about whether or not we should be going for egg freezing because it is a personal choice at the end of the day. A choice that at present is available at a cost. Many ads that we see online regarding this, they, they target our reproductive anxiety. I mean, they, they play on our, the regret that we might feel at a later point in time for having delayed our child bearing and they, they market it um, as a sort of a reproductive insurance, which could, yes, give a false um, sense of security also. And this has a potential, you know, to affect our behavior. I mean, we may change our behavior, our living lifestyle, uh, thinking that it is okay to delay pregnancy indefinitely, believing that we have stored eggs and they can 100% be used at a later point in time. So it is very, very important that, that you talk to your specialist about it and have an honest and open discussion about uh, what are the success rate of the procedure, what are the risks, what are the benefits and weigh the risks versus the benefits for your particular situation as well because it is a medical procedure at the end of the day which is safe, yes, because most of the women who are going to go for this planned egg uh, freezing are young and they are healthy, right? But having said that, it is a medical procedure which is not without risks. You need to ask your specialist, what is the success rate of the procedure? Success rate is the likelihood or the chances of achieving a pregnancy after thawing the cryopreserved embryos. However, yes, under expert hands, under expert guidance with good labs, with good cryopreservation facilities, they can offer you a good success rates as well. So that will depend from center to center as well. And other than that, it is very, very important to remember that uh, the success rate is better when eggs are frozen at a younger age, like let's say before the age of 35 years. So there are many women, many of my colleagues who uh, inquire about uh, freezing their eggs once they are beyond the age of 35. And then we see that the chances of success are lesser. So the belief is that eggs which are, let's say, for example, frozen at the age of 30. So they will, you know, uh, have that uh, age of 30 only once they are going to be used, let's say, five years down the line or eight years down the line, right? So when one decides to get pregnant using those frozen eggs, the age of those frozen eggs remains at the age of 30. But you yourself, let's say, for example, a 35, 36 or 38. So had you, you know, delayed your pregnancy without having a reserve of eggs, then at that point in time, if at all infertility happened, if at all in vitro fertilization would have been required, then, then, then the age of your eggs would have been what your biological age is, let's say, for example, 36 or 38. So now, let's say you have some eggs which are younger and those eggs are going to perform better, right? So the advantage is much more pronounced or much more or the success rate is more when eggs are frozen in their early 30s as compared to somebody who's going to get eggs frozen in her late 30s. So you need to have this discussion with your specialist as well. And currently the guidelines are that uh, the eggs can be frozen for a maximum period of about 10 years or so. So what does need to keep that in mind also because uh, when one starts uh, with, uh, freezing their eggs at a younger age, then, then life is such that, you know, things may change over time uh, in life and different things may happen where sometimes you may never use those eggs and you may have a biological uh, conception uh, spontaneously and that's also a possibility. And currently this procedure is available in the private healthcare sector. Uh, so it is going to involve uh, cost for the drugs involved for the, uh, you know, anesthetist cost, for the doctor cost, for the equipment cost, and a yearly premium to be paid for keeping the eggs under storage as well. So that cost needs to be also factored while making this decision for yourself.
and I don't mean to scare the woman uh, bombarding you with the information regarding this can happen or that could go wrong. No, it's not like that. But the problem is that it is often marketed as being something too easy. And and one should have the right kind of information as well when you are taking such uh, decisions uh, for your life. Um, so one needs to have an open discussion with the specialist as to what this procedure is going to involve. So two weeks of fertility drug treatment is given to stimulate the ovaries generally. Okay. Now you need to know that in natural cycles, what happens is that each month our ovary releases a single egg. Now in these stimulated cycles, what happens is that these drugs that are used, they are hormonal agents, right? And these hormones stimulate the ovaries so that a number of eggs are growing simultaneously. So we need to have a good number of eggs to begin with, right? Because um, we need to have a good reserve to store, right? And sometimes it is seen that uh, in older women, uh, maybe one cycle of stimulation may lead just a few number of eggs, maybe five, six, seven, and we want, let's say, 15, 20 eggs then maybe multiple cycles of ovarian stimulation may be needed and that will also add to the cost and you know the stress of the procedure as well so you need to be aware of that right moreover there are side effects of these drugs right and um, most of the times these side effects are minor they are manageable but then there are certain rare but dangerous side effects like the ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome so you need to be aware that uh, the egg retrieval process that is done, that is also done under general anesthesia, right? And like any medical procedure, it will involve some inherent risk of its own, right? So even when we say that the procedure is very safe in the best of hands, yes, of course, it is a medical procedure with its inherent uh, risks involved. So it's not a one glove fits all kind of a situation. The treatment protocol is carefully tailored to the patient specifically, right? So different treatment protocols are designed around the particular patient to minimize the side effects and to minimize the complications that is also there. So you could also ask that, you know, why so many uh, eggs we need to begin with, right? Or why such ovarian stimulation is required to begin with? Now, that's because uh, when we give the ovarian stimulation and when the eggs are growing, not all the eggs that are growing will be able to be extracted. Not all the eggs that are extracted will manage to survive in the lab, okay? We are freezing them, using them at a later point in time. So, not all the eggs that are going to be thawed are actually going to survive. Not all the eggs that manage to survive will actually uh, get fertilized right so we may get um, some embryos out of the many eggs that were uh, frozen and not all the embryos that are going to be made in the lab are going to survive so there is an attrition at each level at each step right so at the end of the day there is not a hundred percent guarantee of a successful pregnancy right so the chances are good uh, as compared to a situation where uh, one would want to conceive, let's say, or one would want to have an IVF, let's say, at the age of 38 or 40. At that point in time, using the uh, eggs of fresh cycles at that later age will definitely have a lesser success rate as compared to eggs that were frozen at a younger age. But those success rates are very variable and it is not 100% success rate. The success rate varies with the age of the woman the success rate varies with your overall general health as well you see because over a period of time our lifestyle also matters and you know if we are not maintaining a, a healthy lifestyle or we are keeping too much of stress then all these things also contribute to the success or failure of the procedure that is IVF. So you also need to understand that when you plan to use these eggs at a later age, right, the pregnancy will be achieved with IVF and getting pregnant at a later age puts the pregnancy at risk of developing certain complications like hypertension, gestational diabetes, preeclampsia, right, so that also needs to be kept in mind. And it is important to know about all of these things because um, 
if this information is there with the patients, many times I see women changing their decision. Like, for example, if there, there are women considering freezing their eggs at the age of 35, 36, or 37, then they may choose to, you know, rather start a family um, earlier uh, rather than to delay their, uh, you know, fertility plans. Now, sometimes there are married women, married couples, let's say, who do not for the time being want to plan on having a baby and then they explore the option of uh, egg freezing. And at that point in time, they are offered another option that is available and that is embryo freezing, right? So one thing is that you could get your eggs frozen. The other thing is that you could get your embryo frozen. Now, please understand that uh, both procedures are safe. They are all included. They are all part of the entire in vitro fertilization procedure only. In one situation where we are just freezing the eggs, in the other situation we are freezing the embryos. Sometimes there are couples who could want to, you know, save the eggs also, save the embryos also. So both procedures are available. Important distinction to be kept in mind is that, you know, when you freeze the eggs, the the eggs are the property of the woman. So with when you have you when you're unmarried, it makes the only option or the only choice available. Uh, when you are married and you are trying to uh, freeze an embryo along with your partner, then then both the partners, they are owners of that embryo. Okay, so it doesn't just belong to you, particularly it belongs to your partner as well. So there are certain life decisions where, which also needs to be kept in mind because there are ethical issues involved here. You know, what will happen uh, if if unfortunately the marriage ends in a divorce or there is some separation or a partner uh, just simply changes their mind I mean either of the partner could change their mind at a later point in time then what would happen to those embryos or um, embryos that are not used okay what will happen to those how are they disposed of so there are ethical uh, concerns of couples here as well and make sure that you voice these concerns to your specialist and talk about them and have an honest an open discussion about these aspects as well. So egg freezing is a very viable, safe option that medical science is offering to our generation where women can think about, you know, taking some control of their biological clock in their own hands, I agree, right? But yes, um, one needs to be aware of both sides of the coins and not just have one-sided conversation regarding this uh, egg freezing and one should make a conscious and informed decision for themselves as to whether or not they want their eggs frozen. So again, it is my argument is pro-choice definitely, but I believe it is important to make a choice after having all the right information in front of you. But always remember that the quality and the number of um, your eggs, yes, they dramatically depend on your age, but they also depend on your lifestyle, right? So maintaining a healthy lifestyle all this while is important. Cutting down on alcohol, cutting down on smoking, and uh, maintaining, uh, you know, a good amount of uh, exercise is uh, important. Keeping your weight under check is important because all these things, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, we go a long way in reducing stress and anxiety about our reproductive health as well. Thank you so much.